Hi, my name is Arthur Tarambula, and I am a country blues interpreter. Uh, I play pre-war blues, and uh, I like to also think of myself as a country blues messenger. The way I would define the medium that I work through is um, more of like a revitalizing something historical um, that doesn't always get highlighted within the original uh, figures that are in that genre or music. Um, and I think American music uh, utilizes this genre, but doesn't always reflect upon the groundwork from where it comes from. Uh, yeah, so I would say that while I, was, I studied at Berklee College of Music, um, while I was there, I met a troubadour that was passing through town um, named Matt Rivers. And at the time I was playing uh, music of like Chet Atkins and studying Bob Dylan, but I, I knew that I wanted more um, and I wanted to go deeper in some ways, and I wanted something that was really gonna resonate with me. And uh, this this uh, artist I met, he was playing these old songs, and uh, there was something about those songs that really hit me. Um, and he taught me the uh, song Railroad Bill. And I went home and I finished learning it, and then I think I met with them the next day, and I uh, you know played with them and heard more songs. And um, during that time, a friend of his um, was passing by. I think they were staying with him, uh, Sarah Rogo. Um, she was like, oh, you know, and she's a, she's a great slide player and musician um, and interpreter as well. And she said to me, oh, do you know, you know, Paul Rochelle, Annie Rains and Woody Mann? And I said, no, I, I don't know them. And they recommended that I study with them. Uh, and they're part of the Roots program at Berkeley and um, they have worked with some of the original artists uh, of this music and have studied under them and studied alongside them and have played alongside them. So um, I went and I started studying with uh, these teachers and um, I just found it very enriching and uh, it was a, an art that a side of art that I feel like is not, um, I guess you could say lamented enough. It's not brought to brought forward in its um, natural way. And I don't think that I have, you know, I'm not a purist. I, I know I'm not any of these artists, um, but I do try to uh, capture something that is, uh, that I can relate to within those recordings and bring it forward. Um, and I think that my studies with Paul, Annie, and Woody, I think um, it was important that I studied with them because they helped me learn the history and just why, what makes it, learning ways how you can bring this music forward to people in a way that is meaningful and insightful and historical. Um, and again, I don't always feel like artists do that when it comes to reflecting upon country blues or other forms of American art. Um, I think blues stands out to me among other genres because there's a really strong sense of vulnerability and presence. Um, it is uh, an outsider art, which I think people uh, people don't really know, but a lot of it is within these subcultures in America. Um, and I think that it's, uh, it's, a, it's music that has a way of keeping, keeping moving forward with reiterations and uh, 
reinterpretations of things that no one owns. Um, it has a way of just, uh, yeah, of just being very stripped down, but but real. Um, so I think copyright's kind of interesting. Uh, in some ways, I feel like copywriting has ruined music. Um, I think it's an interesting way to market something and patent it or w whatever it may be. Um, and I think that uh, it has kind of ruined, uh, you know, music and the way that people can, an artist can reinterpret something. Um, but I also know that there, there can be copying, you know, copying something. Um, but I think for myself or, you know, for others that, um, it's, you know, again, more just about educating and, um, yeah, copywriting is, um, is good, but it's bad, I guess. Yeah, I think there's definitely a universal aspect to the blues. Um, I think just like in other forms of art, there are, you know, themes, there are symbols, there's ways to represent uh, a bigger picture that brings people together. Um, and I think that that is, uh, you know, a big aspect of that art form. I've been very inspired by um, and reinterpret are, you know, Robert Johnson, Skip James, Blind Blake, Reverend Gary Davis, uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson, Charlie Patton. Um, who else am I thinking of? Lightning Hopkins, Elmore James. Uh, Elmore James isn't really country blues, that's later, but, um, you know, that's just like the next, the next step the, the next reiteration. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily Elmore James, but there is influence there. Um, uh, Mississippi John Hurt, Elizabeth Cotton. Uh, that, I mean, those are just some names I'm thinking of, but uh, there are so, so many names. When you really start to dig in, it's like the world just opens up and it, it just, I don't know, at least for me, it changed everything, so. It's funny because when you when you talk to these individuals, like it's not like oh they're just doing this one thing. It's like they have like usually a much almost like larger understanding of American culture and American music um, and the history. And it's it's really uh, it's really something to to interact with these individuals and um, you know. It's almost like I don't even really know their story, you know? It's like I know the story of the masses from them or things that I didn't know before. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like all aspects of folk music. It's kind of moving something forward um, that has something to say and you don't always have to say it. Um, but the only way that's going to be said is if, you know, you keep moving it forward in some way. Yeah, so I do perform, uh, you know, this music live. Um, and I think that I try to perform this music live regularly because I think that is where it comes from. It comes from live performance and then eventually it shifted into a recording art. Um, but traditionally this music is meant to be played in front of people, with people and an experience altogether. Yeah, I think Lowell is different because I think that there is a community of people that are just, um, 
excited about different forms of art and ready to try new things um, and collaborate. Um, but then again, like I will be honest, I haven't lived in a lot of cities. I lived in the Boston area for quite some time, but I just didn't, I didn't find much appeal there um, being the time that it is. Um, but when I moved to Lowell, I just found like different avenues where I could express myself and um, also express this music. I mean, before I really was pushing blues, I was playing different forms of rock or other forms of folk music. Um, but then I basic, I eventually committed to blues and um, people have been pretty receptive. And uh, I think people also like to, you know, hear about these artists and learn more about it um, and see the bigger picture of it all. Uh, so I got into music therapy because um, I knew as a child that um, I enjoyed hearing people's stories and uh, kind of helping them through their stories um, uh, and having that empathy towards people um, in the human condition, which I think is all a part of these arts um, and having a fascination with that as well. And um, I guess, you know, from my own personal experiences, I just knew that I wanted to work in a field that was emotionally, uh, I guess, helpful, but also um, I was very attached to music. So I didn't want to leave either of those to the wayside. And um, while music can be therapeutic, I don't feel that it's always getting right to the core of what's going on. Um, it can be a pretty passive process. While I do think that a therapist is important in facilitating people through that process in a loving and guiding way um, that can, you know, move them towards a healthier direction. It's always tough doing, you know, especially talking about this music because it's like I'm a white guy. <laughs> You know, I'll be honest, you know, um, but it's one of those things that it just needs to keep going. And I'm like, I know there's going to be people that are better at doing this than me, but it's like if I can inspire people that will do it better than me, that's really the, the end game.